Hello, how are you people? Um, I hope you're all doing good. Share the podcast if you're just joining. Uh, very good. Share the podcast, please. Uh, good afternoon. If you're in Liberia, good evening if you're in Liberia. I think it should be 5 p.m. in Liberia. And uh, the time in uh, the time in on, on the East Coast is 1 p.m. Make that one minute, one minute past 1 p.m. Uh, welcome to this brief podcast. If you are a follower of the Costa Show, I'm pretty sure you you didn't expect us to have been on the show this morning because you know that uh, we don't do the show on on Liberian holidays. So therefore, we couldn't have done, we were not on this morning. But the uh, rest of the show will be on tomorrow morning, uh, like every other weekday morning uh, at uh, 10.30 Liberian time. It's very good to be here. Share the podcast, and I'm going to be here for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, and I'm done. Um, I just want to talk to you about something. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, there, there I, I don't know how I'm going to say it. I'm not yet to, to gloat or to celebrate, uh, but sometimes... Vindication, almost always, it feels great to be vindicated. When you say something and then it turns out to be true, that's vindication. Sometimes people will deny, people will dismiss, people are skeptical. Or sometimes people wish that what you're saying is not true because it, it, it would affect them. So, and then it turns out, it turns out to be true. That's vindication. And that is the situation here. It was exactly March of, um, share, share the video folks. It was March of last year. When on one fateful day in March, I received a call from one of my sources in Washington, D.C. A Capitol Hill source. Informing me that Senator, that Congressman, influential Congressman Chris Smith from the great state of New Jersey, the Garden State, had held a one-day hearing. And in that hearing, Congressman Smith said, among other things, that they were expanding. The, the hearing was held on the team taking stock. They were making an assessment of the impact of the global Maniski sanctions. And the team was taking stock. Taking stock means reviewing the impact of something that has been in play. That was the team of that hearing. In our hearing, Congressman Chris Smith mentioned Liberia. He said, now we turn to Liberia. You remember I played that clip of the whole country. People were going in uproar. Costa just dropped a bombshell. Well, it was one of the biggest bombshells I dropped in the year 2021. Chris Smith said, and I cut, his, it, was, it was long. That whole hearing was over two hours. They sent me the link. But they told me where the particular segment Christmas. Oh, how do you think I knew that? It was a two hour long uh, year. And the soul said, go to this particular point of the video. This is where Christmas speaks about Liberia. I went there, I captured it. I cut it, I published it. And the whole country was talking about it. 
That's why he said kleptocratic. The government of Liberia is a kleptocratic regime and that more needs to be done. He mentioned Vani Sherman, the reason the sanction Vani Sherman, the impact and that more needs to be done. I said sanctions were coming. He said I was lying. They said I was lying. The government began to attack. They and the people began to attack Chris Smith. The man I don't want lawmaker. He's an insignificant man. He's dead. They don't know that Chris Smith is the second, is the second con congressman with the, the second most number of bills passed into law. It's under his belt. He wears that belt as the number two man in terms of the most bills passed. Second most bills passed into law. The second most laws passed in Congress can be attributed is, is, is uh, Congressman Chris Smith. They say I was lying. No sanctions are coming. Costa is a bloody liar. He's a blackmailer. He's blackmailing the government. The government had the people issuing statements. Oh, Costa is lying. No sanctions coming. Blah, blah, blah. That's what they said. They made trips to the U.S. They went back. They told their people everything was fine. Nobody should worry about it. And Costa is a bloody liar. <laughs> These things take time. They take time. I said a series of things would have happened. I said oh, there was going to be a statement from Congress. It didn't happen when I said it would happen, but what? The statement happened about two months ago. They issued a statement. That resolution from the House of uh, Representatives of the U.S. Congress. I said the sanctions are coming today of all dates, the birthday of the first president of Liberia, the United States ambassador, the senior most American diplomat to Liberia, the senior most representative of the United States government to our country spoke out in a clear an unambiguous statement he issued it today. <laughs> I didn't say it. He said it. This is the first time the representative of the United States government to Liberia has spoken out about sanctions coming. He could not be clearer. I will read his statement. Some of you have read it. Some of you haven't. Some of you are going to be hearing it for the first time on this platform. Some of you who have even read it I'm not going to say I'm any kind of expert here in deciphering or interpreting diplomatic language, but I just want to help break it down so you can understand it based on how I understand it. The statement was put out today. <laughs> this is the first time America's chief diplomat to Liberia has spoken out very clearly that sanctions are indeed on the way. Not sanctions on Liberia as a country, on the Liberian people, but targeted individual sanctions on individuals in government that they believe are responsible for gross violations of human rights, rampant corruption, abuse of power, and a whole number of things. And undermining the rule of law in the country. These are not acts that are committed by Manwata in Dwala Make, or Mankumba in uh, uh, Zozo or Foya. These are acts that are being committed by those who have the stewardship of the state. Individuals in government. And he was very clear. He said, individuals in government. I will read a statement for you. Before I read a statement and, try and, 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 and attempt to break it down to you so that you understand the magnitude and the gravitas of this statement, I want to pass this information by you. By the end of this month, today is the 14th day, the 15th day of March, 2022. By the end of March, the first batch of U.S. sanctions against Liberian government officials is expected to be released. Let me repeat myself. I said it's expected. According to my sources, by the end of this month, that means how many more days have we got in March? Three, four? 
I mean, uh, 16 more days or 15 more days? How many days does March have? By the end of March, the first batch of U.S. sanctions, targeted U.S. sanctions, will be released by month's end. Remember, I said this here. <laughs> now we go and read a statement. It is very sad. This statement. Extremely sad. So, so sad. I'm going to read a statement for you. You know, there's something called a diplomatic language. The nuance of diplomatic language. Diplomats often don't speak as simply and boldly as does an ordinary man. But for the American ambassador to speak in such an in such an unnuanced way, there, there are no nuances in this statement, in this article published by the American ambassador. The, the statement could not be clearer. It is extremely clear. I'm going to read it for you. Embassy of the United States of America, Monrovia, 502 Benson Street, Monrovia, for immediate release. Up aired. For those of you who do not know what an up aired is, you might have seen this an up aired, but you may not know what an up aired means. An up aired is an opinion editorial. That's what up stands for. OP stands for opinion and ED stands for editorial. So you have a newspaper. I'm not the editor, but I write an opinion and I would have you publish it for me in your paper. It's called an up aired. It is not the official editorial of the newspaper. It is the editorial published by somebody else. That's what it's called an op-ed. So this is an op-ed written by the American ambassador. The title of this op-ed is What Would J.J. Roberts Today is Joseph Jenkins Roberts' birthday, the first president of Liberia. And the American ambassador said, you know what? I'm going to take this day I'm going to use this particular occasion to issue this statement. Again, it was done on purpose. It was calculated. It was done on purpose. These people do not do things haphazardly. It was calculated. It was planned. And they decided that they were going to do it today. The title. I'm going to read the title for you. What would J.J. Roberts have to say about Liberia today? What would J.J. Roberts have to say about Liberia today. The man whose birthday we celebrate today as a national holiday, the first founding president of the Republic, what would he say today if he were alive about what Liberia has become? That is the title of the op-ed or opinion editorial by the American ambassador. Now I read. As we celebrate the life of a great Liberian, born 213 years ago in the United States, before emigrating to this land at 20 years old. I have been asking myself what Joseph Jenkins Roberts would say about Liberia today. 60 years after the arrival of the United States Agency for International Development, you said in Liberia, 19 years after the end of the, life of the Civil War crisis and seven years after the eradication of Ebola, the taxpayers of the United States continue to contribute to this country over $110 million per year of foreign assistance. This includes over $79 million per year donated to the health sector Approximately $9 million is specifically for purchasing medications and commodities for the Liberian people and improving the Ministry of Health's effective distribution and warehousing of pharmaceuticals, tablets, medicines the Americans buy and give to them, Ministry of Health. Despite this extra support, we learn regularly about places like Kolahun in Lofa County, and San Equally in Nima County, where clinics and hospitals must make do without even the most basic drugs. 
The man say, all oh, their money we're spending, we're giving it to you, we're doing that one, we're doing that one, to buy medicine. Yet there are places in Kulahun, Lofa County, and clinics in Sanikwele, Nima County, where the most basic drugs, they ain't got it. Paracetamol and chloroquine and amoxicillin, they ain't got it. You're stealing the drugs. I'm going to read further. Troublingly, embassy investigations indicate. What kind of investigation? Embassy investigations. The American embassy conducted their own investigations. Embassy investigations indicate that not only are some citizens diverting public medical resources and low-cost drugs for personal gain, but that babies, young children, and birthing mothers are dying needlessly as a result. They may say we did our own investigation and we found out that not only are they stealing the drugs that are meant for the public, for these clinics and hospitals, that as a result of the stealing, Babies, pregnant women who go to give birth, die in childbirth or die young because the drugs that were bought by the American taxpayers are stolen and sold to private hospitals and clinics by government officials. Let me read further. What would J.J. Roberts have to say about this? The man is asking a question. This sounds like a sermon. This boy must be a Baptist preacher. This American ambassador, Michael McCarthy, must be a Baptist preacher. He reminds me of a Baptist preacher. What would J.J. Roberts say? You know how the Baptist preacher can preach, right? Now, I'm a Baptist, so I know how Baptist preachers preach, you know? And they would, uh, they would talk about this and talk about that, and they would come back to the central theme of the sermon, and they would say, what? Would Jesus Christ say if he were on earth today? Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so he says all of this. Then he comes back. He said, what would J.J. Roberts have to say about this? Hmm. He goes further. As a Peace Corps volunteer, I was blessed to live for two years in villages without electricity or running water in West Africa. First thing every morning, each household would take advantage of the cool early morning daylight to sweep inside and outside and dispose of debris. I mean that dead garbage waste. Villagers then coordinated with the local government to deliver waste to a designated landfill. He's sharing his experience as a Peace Corps, but wait for what he's about to say. The state, the state of cleanliness in the city of Monrovia. Hello? Where is the Pipi Park Gucci clown Jefferson Koji who just said he graduated from LU? Listen to this. The state of cleanliness in the city of Monrovia, which is more developed and a far wealthier community sadly does not compare. Amen! The man said the little villages he lived in in West Africa for two years as a Peace Corps volunteer. When they would wake up in the morning, the first thing they would do, they would sweep inside and sweep outside and take the debris or the waste, the garbage, and go and throw it to a landfill designated by the local authorities. He said even those villages that, <laughs> that were poor, the, the dirtiness of Monrovia, the Monrovia dirty part of villages. Amen. Look at the kind of insult. The man is saying the villages are cleaner than your capital city, Monrovia. The boy is a Baptist preacher. Listen, he says, the state of cleanliness in the city of Monrovia, which is far more developed and a far wealthier community, sadly does not compare. <laughs> that means the villages are cleaner than the capital city, Monrovia. Jesus, a village clean part of your city. Your capital city. That's what the American ambassador said. That's not me say. Let me read further. Last month, I was surprised. Ha! He read it for Koji. 
The American ambassador is ready for Jefferson Kochi. Listen to this. Last month, I was surprised at the words of certain leadership on Monrovia Day. That Pipipa Gucci clown ignorant Jefferson Koji he's talking about. Last month, I was surprised at the words of certain leadership on Monrovia Day. A senior official lamented that unlike his previous three years in office, no donor or external partner is funding the recurring cost of solid waste collection and disposal. The American ambassador said, last month I was sitting down. I heard that stupid boy they call Jefferson Koji talking say, eh, the people, they're not helping him to clean the city. They're not giving him money to clean the city, to collect the garbage, to go dispose of it. The American ambassador said he was sitting down and he heard that nonsense. He's just like cursing Jefferson Koji. That stupid boy talking about, we must go get you money to move dead from your city. The villages I used to be in, in West Africa for two years, they told you to clean their own day and go away say that we from a foreign country more gave you money to go clean garbage. The man said I was saying that my my bro, my bro was bawling in me. So yeah, that Salama Swan, Pipi Pak, Gucci clown say that we the one more gave them money to go take the garbage, the dirt that you made in your own city. We more can't get you money to clean it. But the Pipi Pak, Gucci clown know how to wear bow tie and knock off Gucci and Prada and Givenchy, but they not get trucks to go clean garbage that we don't want to give it to them. You can see the man vest. The man vest, the man too damn vest. Pip, pip, pop, man let out to open your mouth and say, you're not giving me money to clean the city. That the American never gave you money to clean the city, you damn stupid people. Listen to this, the man goes further. The man goes further. Implying, he, he, he's speaking further to Jefferson Goji, Implying that he was abandoned by the international community. Is there a more basic local government responsibility than the collection and proper disposal of garbage? Let me read this for them. I think I'm memorizing it. Is there a more basic responsibility than the collection and disposal of garbage? You know what I mean, sir? It, let me break it down. So, then people won't tell me, is there something more common than collecting debt and throwing it away? What it could be so common, more basic, more easy than collecting debt and chunking it away that you sit and they open your dirty mouth. You say, we, the international community, will get you money to put your own debt. I want to tell you, I say, everybody not understand this statement, they man, I got to break it down. Now they break it down, y'all breaking it down. Is there something more basic? Is there a responsibility more basic than the collection and disposal of garbage? The man said, please show me what is more common than collecting there and throwing it away. That you want us to come do it for you, to get you money for it. Listen to this thing the man say. Now I want to say, y'all need an interpretation. Y'all don't understand what the man say. <laughs> when you get to the juicy pie, he said, Y'all wait. That's our job. We know our job. Is there a more basic local government responsibility than the collection and disposal of garbage? That means the man say, If that pig is so stupid that he not know. That the simplest duty he, should, he got on his hand is to call it a day and throw it away. That he waiting for us to come get him money to do that one. Fiat for America will not get money for that one. Wallahi! That's what, that what the man saying. That's what the man saying. But let's read further. Then he, then he throws the team back in. Would Liberia's first president have imagined that? Would Liberia's first president have imagined that 175 years after independence, foreigners would be held responsible for the removal for the removal of garbage in his capital city? Eba, the man was on Jefferson Kojie fake. Yeah, Let me read it one again. Maybe you want to say. Would Liberia's first president have imagined 
that 175 years after independence, foreigners should be held responsible for the removal of garbage in his capital city. They may say, so, Joseph didn't around the play. Where he at? Hmm? How you think he feeling? Joseph didn't around feeling that after 175 years of running a country, and that how you will feel that the certain male, the pipi pa kuji guji clown certain male is expecting foreigners to give money to clean a capital city. How will Bob Joseph Dingin Rao feel? Hey, Amen, ma. You answer the question. That's what the American ambassador said. How will Bob Joseph Dingin Rao feel? Hey, Bob Joseph Dingin Rao. How would you feel? That after 175 years, that your capital city, they say we the one, we the foreigner then, we the one responsible to clean it. That the question the man asks you, that the question the man asks you, come Michael Doe TPC, that the question the American ambassador asks him to Bob Joseph Jingle Rao. Bob Joseph Jingle Rao, how would you feel? That 175 years later, that we don't want the foreigner then, we don't want supposed to clean city for the dirty people then in your in your in your country. And the question the man asking. He writes further. Listen, still got some juicy part left. The most the, the juiciest part. You can't say the most juiciest. You cannot use most is a superlative. And juiciest is also a superlative. You can't use them both together. It would be wrong. The tautology. Bad to use them both. On February 25, we learned that a Rhode Island state representative, listen, it's a librarian guy, Nathan W. Bia Senior, is donating electronic voting equipment to the Liberian House, to the legislature. This is not the first of such equipment donated to help make Liberia's top legislative body more transparent to its citizens. The president had a fight stamp. Nathan Bia gave them February, on the 25th of February. Hmm? Last month, Nathan Bia, the Liberian guy in Ireland who got elected. I spoke with him one time. Nathan Bia gave them equipment to vote. When they vote, so we can know how they voted, to keep record. So we can know how each senator voted on a matter for accountability and transparency. To know how John Brown voted, how Mary Colley voted on an issue. Nathan Bia gave it to them. So the American ambassador is saying, but that was not the first time they gave it to them. They been having equipment. The American ambassador goes further. I have been reliably informed that a previous e-voting, that means like electronic voting, I mean you got a red paper, you just press it, it will record it, it save it there for posterity, so we can know in the future who voted and how they voted. I have been reliably informed that a previous e-voting system was installed in 2014 by the U.S. taxpayer, fully funded through the National Democratic Institute, NDI. But it was never used. You, you hear the man? The man said in 2014, the American government, through the National Democratic Institute, they spent U.S. taxpayers' money. They installed an electronic voting system in the legislature. So the debtor Sana Maswane in the legislature, when they go vote, when they, when they, when they vote, they must use it so we can keep the record and know how they voted. The man said it was never used. Does anybody want to? Does any is anybody wondering why the lawmakers don't like the electronic voting system? That they not like it. They they not let that one. Mm -mm. They can say who are voting? Yeah, nay. They like the voice vote. They call it voice vote. Yeah, 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 nay. Nobody wants to use that system. The man said they spend their country money. They install the system in the legislature. They said they not want to use it. They not want to use it because it will recall how they voted, how they not vote. They will record it, so they never used it. Let me read further. 
for his part. President Weir said during his December 10th Summit for Democracy speech, quote, he's quoting John Weir now, quote, over the next year, we intend to introduce legislative transparency by making all votes public so that constituents can hold their lawmakers accountable for their actions, which is a fundamental element of any healthy Democracy, unquote. Joe Yao, Joe Biden has a democracy forum. He invited them electronically. That the speech Joe Yao gave, he said, we will make sure we put it in there so the men can vote. And then, where he eh? Where, where play eh? Yeah. He not do it. He not intend to do it. Said Allah, la Coloma. Listen, let me read further. I hope, this is the American ambassador continuing to speak. I hope, the legislature embraces this latest opportunity to increase citizen awareness of the actions of their elected officials. Would J.J. Rabbers have believed that in modern Liberia, a constitutional republic where all power is inherent in the people, legislators would purposely neglect to use a tool created to educate citizens on how their democratically elected representatives vote. They may say, what did Joseph Jigen Rao were going to say if you were here today? How you were going to react that they put machine in the play there so the men can get present and vote so we all can know how they voted on the issues that come before them? Eh? What did Joseph Jingen Rao were going to say if you were going to be here today? That they get them, they put machine, the people them bring it from the foreign country, they spend their country money, they put the machine there so they can vote, so we can know how they will vote. They say they not want to use a machine. Let that machine say that once, that machine can be exposed, or we not want to use it. The American president say, what thing J.J. Rao was going to say if you're going to be here? No, nah, no, nah, that in a modern democracy, they put machine there for the people to know how the citizens then will know how the people then voting. The people say, they not want to use a machine. What thing J.J. Rao was going to say? They may have birthday, what we celebrating today. What thing you are going to say? That the question the American ambassador want to know, that the one you want to know the answer to. Let me read further. Hmm. The United States of America, huh, the power, the most juicy part coming, the most juicy part is coming. The United States of America has no doubt also failed to live up to some of the aspirations of our first president. But I believe George Washington, the first president of America, would be pleased to know that the country he fought to establish will today be working to support democracy and fight corruption both at home and in places like Liberia. The man said, even in our own country, we don't do everything we say we're going to do. All the things George Washington said, the first president said we're going to do in our country, we not do all. But at least our first president would be proud of us to know that we are fighting to promote democracy and the rule of law and we are fighting corruption at home and abroad in places like Liberia. At least he will be proud of us for doing that one. But Liberia, pa, nothing. The man writes further. The U.S. House of Representatives, uh -huh. sanctions. This is the part that has to do with sanctions. Paying attention. The U.S. House of Representatives introduced Resolution 907. Sponsored by who else? None other but the first black man from the 5th Congressional District of New York, a Democrat, Gregory Meeks, who chaired the Congressional Delegation to Liberia. We're taking pictures with our official in the Valafi. <laughs> that the man that said we'll bring his sanction on this. <laughs> yeah, the man let off. The man let off. By way, look at the man come to Liberia. The man, the man, the man get our official then said certificate. Man. The man let off. Greg, Greg, Greg Meeks, the man let out, man. Y'all don't know nothing. The man just sang song. I mean, the man don't want sang song. The man let out power. That what they were doing. Y'all ain't see how come many were celebrating when Greg Meeks headed the game into Liberia. 
Oh, the men, this is the men let them power. The men love Liberia. The men love the people in the government. That, 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 that is male. They see men, what was smiling with you, what was giving you a certificate, they were smiling, you were putting it on Facebook. That the men sponsored the resolution 907. Where a man is signing, they say they must be sanctioned. Listen, up. the U.S. House of Representatives introduced Resolution 907 on February 4 of this year, which encourages Liberia to redouble its efforts to counter corruption and advance the causes of human rights. It also urges Liberia to implement critical economic reforms necessary to accelerate sustainable economic growth and human capital development. The ambassador writes for them. Finally. <laughs> the man said, finally. The hammer coming for that now. Finally, finally. It calls the resolution. The, the ambassador is making reference to a resolution from the chairman of the all-powerful Foreign Affairs Committee in the United States House of Representatives. The Foreign Affairs Committee, you don't play with it, is one of the most powerful committees. Listen. Finally, it calls on the U.S. Treasury. The U.S. Treasury and State Departments. Two U.S. government organs. The Department of the Treasury and the State Department. These two U.S. government organs are the ones charged with the fiduciary responsibility to draw up targeted sanctions against individuals for financial crimes and for corruption and for human rights violations and human rights abuses and blah, blah, blah. These two organs. Listen. Finally, the resolution calls on the U.S. Treasury and State Departments to continue to impose, to continue to do what? To continue to do what? When they say continue to do something, mean you are already doing it. The thing you're doing, continue to do it. It's already in progress. Vanny Seaman, that was the beginning. Prince Johnson, that was the sign that more, more coming. To continue when people read it, they're not understanding it. The man said to bring sanction. They said to continue to bring sanction. And I say bring a sanction today. Or start a sanction. Nah, nah. No. They say continue to bring the sanctions. That's what the man said. To continue to impose targeted sanctions. Ah, listen. I remember... When Gregory Meeks then issued a resolution before they made a delegation to the Liberia, the government people were saying, oh, but the men said they will bring sanctions on people who are responsible for undermining the rule of law and corruption. They did not say government official. That was how many were saying. That was how many saying. They may not say that we don't want the government to bring the sanctions again. The men say they will bring the sanctions on people in Liberia who are responsible for corruption and undermining the rule of law. And those people could be in the opposition. They could, they could be in the government. They could be anywhere. So you yeah, don't make it really that only us in government they're talking about. But listen to what the American ambassador said. He clarified. He made it more specific. Listen. To, to continue to impose targeted sanctions against those responsible for undermining the rule of law and trust of the Liberian people through corruption, gross violations of human rights, and other acts that threaten the peace and security of Liberia. Let me go to the power where it's more specific who the sanctions are meant for. So that there is no ambiguity. Yeah, it is clear, crystal clear. So that nobody can say, that's not what it's coming for. It's coming for everybody. Let me read the part where it is clear who the sanctions are headed toward. These are precision guided targeted sanctions. Eh? When you launch a missile, the missile are not going to everybody, it's going to a certain area. So these missiles are precision guarded and they are targeted and they are making their way and they will start arriving. By the end of the month, the sanction will start landing on the men and where it's coming for. Let me tell you where who we're coming coming for. Days later, you know they say save the best for last, eh? This is the best for last. The man waited, he waited for the end of his beat to turn in. Days later, in her address, 
at SKD Stadium on February 14, Special Assistant to the President of the United States, Dana Banks, stated that corruption eats away at the democracy you have worked so hard to build. But ultimately, only the Liberian government and the Liberian people can tackle corruption, fight for accountability and transparency, and move this country forward. These are the words of Dana Banks in her speech she made when she represented Joe Biden at the bicentennial event. He's quoting her. But then he goes further. Now he speaks for himself. Listen to what he's about to say. This part, I want you to drink some cold water. If you are a government official, or if you are George Weah, drink some water before I read this part. Maybe you've read it. I'm sure you have, but wait for the interpretation and wait for, uh, drink some water. If you are a supporter of the government and uh, drink some water before I read this part and interpret. Myself, I got to drink some water for you. Before I read the part, I got to drink some water myself. So I'm encouraging you to also drink some water. Do the same thing. Drink some water. I'm about to read it. Listen, as these statements indicate, you're talking about all the statements from the American Congress people and from Dana Banks, as these statements indicate, the U.S. government, listen to the part, I will read the part three times. I will read the part three times. I will put emphasis on the part. I will make it clear. Baku, 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 clear. So you can understand it. Let me repeat. As these statements indicate, the U.S. government, they not say the Liberian government, government. They not say the government of Burundi, the government of Rwanda, government of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan. They not say the government, no. They say the United States government is sufficiently concerned. They not say we concern. Mm -mm. You concern and not enough. The men say the United States government is sufficiently concerned. How many times you can say sufficiently concerned? When they met, look. Ha! No, normally, everyone can just say, I'm concerned. I'm very concerned. That all we can say, very concerned. And nothing compared to sufficiently con con concerned. Sufficient already mean plenty. Concern already mean heavy. Then the men say the United States government is sufficiently concerned. America, they're not just they, they not just concern. They concern on that it too sufficient, it too plenty now. <laughs> hey, you understand that now? You understand that now? The America not just concern. America is sufficiently when you become sufficiently concerned now you gotta take action. Hello, when do you take action, my people? First, you are concerned a little bit. I'm a little concerned about what's going on. Okay, I am concerned. Then you say I'm very concerned. Then the highest level is, I am sufficiently concerned. Sufficiently concerned. What it means is that your concern now reaches way to the maximum. To the peak of Mount Everest and Mount Kilimanjaro in Kenya. When you reach that level now, then you must take action. Allow my people, get caught with Johnson. When are you concerned to the extent where you begin to take action? When you are sufficiently concerned. Now the time you can act. Now now you, I'm just concerned a little. Mm -mm -mm. Bah, 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 bah. The, 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 they ain't say that one. Don't make me speak Pele. Mm -mm. Different, different motive. Mm -mm. They ain't say it that way. Pele is speaking now. But they said they are sufficiently concerned. When the concern is sufficient. <laughs> when you are sufficiently concerned. That the time. The same is the U.S. government is sufficiently concerned that corruption in Liberia. Let, let me let me let me let me let me go back. The U.S. government is sufficiently concerned about corruption in Liberia to sanction individuals. Hold up. What did the statement say? The U.S. government is sufficiently concerned about corruption in Liberia to sanction individuals. That is that. That is that. That is that. That is that. 
They say the concern what we concern. They are not ordinary concern. They are not little concern. They are not big concern. That is sufficient concern. So when you are sufficiently concerned now, then you take action. So the statement reads, the statement says, we concern to the level where we're so concerned that we must take action. Let me read. The statement says, the U.S. government is sufficiently concerned about corruption in Liberia to sanction individuals. That means we're too concerned to the extent where we got to do what? We are so sufficient, we are so concerned to the point where we got to do what? Sanction individuals. Ele, they force our hand. We never wanted to do the thing here. We never wanted to bring sanction. Every day we talk, they now want to listen. Every day we talk, they now want to listen. So we are sufficiently concerned to the point where now we're forced to do what? To sanction individuals. Let me read it one more time before we move on to something else. The U.S. government is sufficiently concerned about corruption in Liberia to sanction individuals. That means we are so concerned that the only way we can demonstrate that we are sufficiently concerned is we must sanction individuals. And the individual was sanctioning, what was sanctioning them for? Corruption. They're not sanctioning Pedro for causing Baba cause them when he get vet. They're not Pedro. They're not sanctioning people there who can be chasing plenty of women there all over the place. They're not putting coming for. They're not going to man water in the market who she can carry the press up when when the goose press goes. They're not the old man they're going to. They are going, they are so concerned, they are sufficiently concerned about corruption in Liberia that they are going to sanction individuals. Period. They don't say, listen, sometimes America can say, we are very much concerned about the situation in the country. They can leave it there. They, they don't go further. But now in this statement, the American ambassador say, the U.S. government, he not say me, he, he, he represents the American government. But he, but he could have said, I am very concerned. It is not the same thing as the official policy of the United States government. It might be deemed that way, but not exactly that way. But he ain't, he, he not say me, Michael McCarthy, that not me. Eh, 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 eh. Even though I'm the ambassador, I represent the United States, but that not me I'm talking about. I say who? I say who concern? I say who concern? The United States government is sufficiently concerned about corruption in Liberia to sanction indiv 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 individuals. If any, he carried up the day, yeah, 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 yeah. he break it down, he put it. You know, we who are Oman is a flock. Oman ready to flock is Oman raise or hand high. You know how Oman Oman can raise their hand high. They ready to flock you now. They won't bring the rotten down, but they will carry their hand way up. Yeah, they carry well because they want to gather that velocity, that thing you want to bring them when they land that right there on you back. Yeah. You will feel it. That what my guy just do. The it is building up. Listen, let's do the build up. Let me do the demonstration for you. The United States government is sufficiently concerned about corruption in Liberia to sanction individuals. <laughs> <laughs> what do you not understand? Even the stupid decent thing can understand anyone. <laughs> the stupid decent can understand anyone. Everybody can understand anyone. This is so clear. Everybody can understand anyone. You want me to put it in pellet? No NDA. Cause of many poor libraries. That when I got again, the sanction people know him, know him who that coercion gave. I'm, I'm pretty sure you understood it. <laughs> if you understand it, that you damn business. But anyway. <laughs> America bow. Hey. Hey. No, hey. Hmm. But let me read further. He not, he not finished. Hey. <laughs> you know they bought a birthday preacher. I told you, I say, Makati is a birthday preacher. He's a birthday, birthday preacher. They bought a birthday boy. I, I got to talk to the boy. I see what birthday child he belongs to. Um, listen. <laughs> yeah, then we read, we, we read for them. Hmm. The man was it? Oh, the man, the man was it? He said, Corruption. This is the most difficult. The part the man coming, the last part they won't drop there. The, the last part he dropped. 
the last missile the man dropped that I want to come and read it worse than the one that read everything the one was bad that they sufficiently concerned the one coming to read a bad pala one that one bad up if there's any word called bad up there's no such word it's worse or it's greater but no, no word is bad up they want yet a bad pala one let me read let me read corruption leads to citizen frustration and has had destabilizing effects on countries in the region. The man says corruption leads to citizen frustration and has had destabilizing effects in the region. Corruption can make the citizen frustrated. They just get weak. The man goes further. It poses significant risks to peace and democracy. The book man will say they are sing one all to undermine the peace and stability in the country. Now, this is the last one. <laughs> this is the one the book closes with. And you know they bought a Bible. They bought a Bible. You know what, you know what they bought it? The last one the man wrote, the writing style, you know what they call the font style? Font, F-O-N-T, the writing style. Eh? The man, the last paragraph the man wrote, the man I use is same writing, the man you different writing, different style. Well, maybe you're not understand. The man you curse it. Ain't you no know cursive? The very man say cursive. It's cursive. C-U-R-S-I-V-E. Cursive. That's the correct way. All your time you go to school, you were saying cursive, cursive, not cursive. It's cursive. C-U-R-S-I-V-E. The man change the writing style. For the last one, the man wrote the last paragraph. The man changed the writing to cursive. The man pull out one in cursive. He said, one and all. You know, Jenna, Jenna, when you won't read love letter back in the day, you know, I had cell phone to say, the man put it in cursive. Hmm? Yeah? Cursive. The man, all the things that the man wrote. The last one, yeah, the man put it in cursive. He put it in fine writing. Fine writing when you see it, he say, you just like it. That the one the man put it in. Let me, let me read the one the man wrote. The last one the man wrote. They bought, they bought, they bought a bar ball. They mark out the ball. He's the enemy of the state. They bought it. They bought a hero. They bought a hero. <laughs> they mark out the man yet a hero. <laughs> the man put it in line writing. Eh? The line writing. My man, you won't call you big boy yet, italic and they, it's called italic. Y'all who know the typing baby, they call it italic. That's the name of the writing. But I'm not going to use our word play, but I don't know what italic means. But the man put it in cursive. Let me read the last one the man wrote. <laughs> the man said, <laughs> they bought a bubble. Let me read it. I will read it one three times. I, I got a meeting at two. I got to finish the dinner. How would Liberia's first statesman, that Joseph, that Joseph, Joseph Rao, that Joseph Rao, Joseph Jingle Rao, the man talking about, and the last video, the man put it in italic so you can make it, so you can confuse it with the other one and he wanted to warn you for you to understand it one, clack, 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 clack. So he put it in different writing style. He said, how would Liberia's first test man feel? Hey, to know that his country's top ally, like America, how would Liberia's first test man, just a thing around, feel? To know that his country's top ally, the United States of America, was compelled to sanction members of Liberia's government. To sanction members of Liberia's government just to preserve rule of law and the democracy he helped establish. He ends, I wonder. Let me go back and read on here. He says, How would Liberia's first statesman, Joseph Dingy Roberts, feel to know that his country's top ally, the United States of America, was compelled to sanction members of Liberia's government just to preserve the rule of law and the democracy he helped Establish. On a land the word compel, put it in parentheses, put it in, put line on the, on the head, you 
put quotation, you put it in parenthesis. The man say what he? How would Joseph Dingy Ralph to know that America, the number one ally of his country, was compelled? They fought our hand. They still do much on the war force to procession on the government official. Hey, that the question the man asking. How would Joseph Dingy Ralph feel to know that America was forced to put sanction on the government. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, wait, wait. Yo, na, yeah, yeah. Want me say one more time? How would Liberia's fastest man feel to know that his country's top ally was compelled, compelled? To sanction Liberian government officials. Hey! Then he says, I wonder. I wonder. The last two words of the same, I wonder. The man said, How would Liberia's first man feel to know that his country's top ally? Was compelled. If any of you, man say, Ah, pay, get it, get it, boy, pay. Knowing that more sanction got pay, ah, pay, get it, boy, pay. Ah, pay. If any. The mentor, he said, the hand was forced. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said, Piki, I didn't want to flog you, but you forced me. You know, so, so now when your old man flogged you, then she look at you crying. Then she be feeling bad for you. You know, the mother's love now. She be feeling bad. You see, I know I wanted to flog you, but like, you don't want to force me to flog you. Who has had their mother tell them that? <laughs> My mind is telling me that sometimes. So say, you see, you're here, ha. Huh? You may flog you. Now why America say you? America say you now. You see what you now do? You see what you not do? You not force us to sanction you? We didn't want to do it. But you feel it forcing us to do it. My people, if you're working in the government right now, how you will feel? My people. Eh? If you're working in the government right now, how you will feel? The people say, we didn't want to bring the sanction bin here. Henry Cosa talk about the sanction bin here. Say, Mars a liar. Oh, Cosa a liar. What did Cosa know? Cosa don't know nobody in America. Cosa a liar. They say, uh, uh, the, the late Christmas Sally, he went to, uh, they went to play this day, the, the Pentagon, they say, cause I lie, cause I say he went to Pentagon, I didn't say I go Pentagon, they say, I would say I went Penta, Pe Pentagon, I say, ah, man, get it, go, ah, man, knowing that more sanction got pie. The man say, you force us to bring sanction, how does that general how will feel, to, if he were here today, how would he feel to know that the government force our hands to put sanction on them. They now say they put the sanction on my water. My meeting is about to start. I'm about to start my meeting. I have a two o'clock meeting. I have to go. I've been talking here plenty. My, my people, I see you all. Uh, if any, uh, if any. Uh, no way. No way. No way. Nobody can help them. No lobbying can help them. The sanction coming. Uh, by the end of the month, uh, two, three names will come out. Two, three. Again, while we're talking, it's a bog and lie. Yeah, the American ambassador definitely talking. Thank you so much. God bless you. And you all have yourselves a good day. How would Joseph Jenkins and Ralph feel to know that his country's top ally had to bring sanctions? Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye.